WSFA Channel 12, Montgomery. Live from Alabama's news source, this is WSFA News 12, The Late Report. Thanks for staying with us for tonight's Late Report. We're glad you can join us. A crusty old guy, a man of principle, and American original. Just some of the ways that people are remembering Barry Goldwater. Governor Fob James called him the spark that lit the flame of the conservative movement in America. The former Arizona senator died today at his uh, home in Arizona at the age of 89. He ran for president and carried Alabama as part of his southern sweep. As a result of his race, Alabama Congressman Bill Dickinson became the first Republican congressman in his district in 100 years. Dickinson says that Goldwater left an indelible mark that will not soon be forgotten. Goldwater's funeral will be Wednesday at Arizona State University. A reaction to Barry Goldwater's death continues to pour in from coast to coast. Tonight, we hear your opinion of the man and his legacy. Barry Goldwater was the father of modern American conservatism. Any true conservative will miss him greatly. He was a patriot, a great American. Barry Goldwater was a very truthful, honest man with much integrity. When Barry Goldwater ran for president, that was the first time that I ever voted Republican and have continued to vote Republican ever since. God bless him. He nursed in a, an era of common sense and we're going to miss him. Barry Goldwater has started a movement which I hope will set things straight. I salute Barry Goldwater. Goldwater's family says he died as he lived with dignity, courage, and humility. Voters, especially in Alabama, know what they want out of a politician, and those politicians will find out if they're in tune with the people next week. A new WSFA survey asked 821 registered voters what issue determines their choice for governor. 29% said education. 18% felt strongly about taxes or state spending. 17% said the economy and jobs. 8% thought health care and moral issues like the Ten Commandments are important. 4% said crime and drugs. 2% said party consideration and the environment. And 12% had no answer. One political expert says education will always dominate in Alabama. They mean lots of different things about education. Some mean cost, some means quality, some mean discipline, some mean the, the type of curriculum and so forth. So it's not clear what people have in mind, but, but clearly when they think about state politics and state government, it's education. The primary elections take place Tuesday. Well, what has the colors of the rainbow? It's as big as the United States and sits around on a Montgomery playground. It's a map of the 50 United States painted on the playground at Patterson Elementary School. The creative Van Gogh's behind the project, the Bell South Pioneers. They're a community service organization of about 400 active and retired Bell South employees. The group has now painted 29 playground maps around the state, half of them done by pioneers from right here in the city of Montgomery. What a great way to get the kids to learn the states by sort of hopping around on them out there. A wonderful way to learn, and hopefully that map was waterproofed you know, before this evening. Yeah, especially if they were painting late this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Rich Thomas is in the Storm Center now. Hello, work, Rich. Isn't he? <laughs> Earth to Rich. Mesmerized by the maps right now. You know, this, now. Is, this is the first time I think we've ever uh, tried to go to Rich, and he was oh, just... Oh, hey, Rich. Can we take a shot of Rich up there? There's Rich working away. I can hear him working on his maps now. Either that or he's watching the Braves game, one of the two. But, uh, okay. Uh, well, there we are. <laughs> there you are. Yeah. We have uh, showers and thunderstorms across the area, and uh, they are. it's been good news for a lot of the area. Take a look at radar this tonight. We've had uh, a pretty good rainfall amounts, up to an inch in some places, and the rainfall has been kind of tapering off in the last couple of hours, but we expect overnight that our rainfall situation may improve again, especially during the early morning hours. We'll take a look at the forecast for the overnight hours right now. Look for scattered showers and thunderstorms, 70 degrees for the overnight temperature. Otherwise, for the day tomorrow, rain chances are going to continue to get a little bit better, especially by afternoon heating. We'll take a look at the forecast for the entire weekend coming up in a few minutes. Bob, we're working on the forecast. Back well, to you. Standing, I could hear you just clicking away up there. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Well, do you know one of the most important medications used to treat stroke victims? We'll find out coming up.
But first, a court decision for a former state insurance commissioner. Jimmy Dill will tell you what the court said. And later, they may look like any other children, but these little ones are wise beyond their years. Important Weathermaster Bulletin from Kaiser Fine Furnishings. It's the season for big price reductions on all Weathermaster Wicker Outdoor Furniture by Lane. Featuring weatherproof finishes and luxurious cushions that water just passes through. See the newest color, Canyon, as well as the classics, all 50% off. It's the season for savings. Beautiful, functional Weathermaster Outdoor Furniture is reduced 50% at Kaiser Fine Furnishings on the Wetumpka Highway. Enter the circle of living well. Do you know anything about this crime? On March 21st, 47-year-old James Frederick Helms allegedly stole a significant sum of money from a Tuscaloosa business, then disappeared. But on May 12th, he showed up in Montgomery without the money or any explanation. Do you know anything about the stolen money or where Helms was during that time? If you have any information that might help solve this crime, call 215-STOP and watch Targeting Crime, Crime Stoppers, Wednesday on the 10 o'clock report. The Horse Whisperer is easily one of the best films of the year. Gene Shalit raves, this is a movie to shout about. On every level, The Horse Whisperer is a great movie. The Horse Whisperer, rated PG-13, now playing. Do you know how to make a tree happy? <clears throat> well, first, get rid of the dog. <coughs> then, when your new Bell South telephone book arrives, recycle the old one. <coughs> Simply toss the old book into an orange curbside bag or drop it into a recycling bin. Our goal this year is to collect 98 tons of recyclable phone books. That'll make quite a resource to draw from. Recycle your old phone book today. All right, you can bring the dog back now. Closed captioning is brought to you by Ziegler Jumbos. For over 70 years, a tradition of great taste. Today in Alabama, today on NBC, the 12 o'clock report, live at 5, NBC Nightly News, and the 6 o'clock report. Now you can hear them all on Montgomery's WNZZ Radio, AM 950. You're watching WSFA News 12, Alabama's news source. Former state insurance commissioner Jimmy Dill has been cleared of his ethics and perjury convictions. A state appeals court said today Dill broke no law in his financial dealings with his former firm, nor did he lie about it to the ethics commission. The court says the state wrongly claimed Dill illegally profited in the month it took him to divest himself of his ties to J. Dill Incorporated. The court also said the state failed to present sufficient evidence Dill gave any false testimony concerning his knowledge of a $175,000 payment from the company. Today's decision bars any retrial. Well, while Dill was being cleared of charges, a Prattville man finds himself facing life behind bars. And a Tauga County Circuit Court judge sentenced 53-year-old Marshall Wayne Hall this morning. He was charged with fatally shooting John Wayne McDonald last October. He later pleaded guilty to a manslaughter charge. Hall was released earlier this year because of an error in his paperwork. He fled to North Carolina but later returned to Watauga County and surrendered. Many people think of stroke as a disabling life sentence at best, but it can be treated successfully. A crucial part of treatment involves the drug TPA. But as Ashley Anderson reports, time is also a major factor. I was just uh, working around the house. I went to the refrigerator to get a drink out of it, and I reached in and got it, and it fell out of my hand. And I realized when I couldn't pick it up or anything that there was something wrong. What was wrong was a stroke, but two years later there are no symptoms. That's because Mrs. Johnson was given a drug called TPA that can actually reverse the signs of stroke. Well, stroke's essentially a blood clot on the brain, and basically you have three, just three major arteries that supply the brain, and they supply the entire brain. This is the brain cutting cross section. This dark area here is a stroke, and this is the left middle cerebral artery, which is the area that affects speech. And this stroke right here would make a person be unable to talk and be paralyzed on the right side of their body. But if the patient gets to the hospital immediately and has TPA administered, there may be no lasting damage. 
Dr. Miller says the one message he wants to get across to the general public is that there is one very special enemy when it comes to stroke or brain attack, and that's time. That's because there's a very narrow window of opportunity when it comes to treatment. And once that window of opportunity is passed, the consequences could be severe. Stroke needs to be treated within the first three hours. Once you reach a period of four to six hours, it's been proven in animal studies that the brain has irreversible damage. And so the patient has to get the treatment within the first three hours. So if you have any symptoms like numbness, slurred speech, or weakness... Probably to get to the hospital as quick as you can. Because time's important in this as well as a heart attack. And that's why doctors call stroke a brain attack. Ashley Anderson, WSFA News 12, Montgomery. Strokes or brain attacks are more common in the southeastern U.S. In fact, this area is commonly called the stroke belt. That's hard to believe I, that there's a geographic region that has more than others. But with all of that said, let me tell you, bottom really fell out here and all over central Alabama. It did, and especially in central Alabama. I think southeast Alabama kind of got the short end of the stick today. But there's always tomorrow, and the rain chances and the signs are looking good for tomorrow. So there are a lot of happy weather watches tonight. We'll talk about that and look ahead for you. Coming up next. At Food World, Boston butt pork roast is just 99 cents a pound. Center cut pork loin chops in the family pack, only $1.99 a pound. And a 12 pack of Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Mountain Dew, or 7 Up is just $1.99 with your bonus value card. Low price places, Food World. When something's liquid, it can go anywhere. It can get into anything. That's the idea behind Enamelon. The first toothpaste to combine cavity-fighting fluoride with liquid calcium. Enamelon penetrates the weak spots in your teeth, strengthening the enamel, keeping teeth strong and healthy. Liquid calcium found only in a new toothpaste called Enamelon. Later on the Tonight Show, Jay reveals the president's side of the story. I would never ask anyone to lie. Lie down, perhaps, but not lie! <laughs> Plus, Third Rock's John Lithgow, Fumka Jansen, Rob Schneider, and eerie presidential similarities revealed. Nixon, ex-president Clinton, sex president <laughs> Then Conan's got Elton John tonight. The motive behind the shocking murder of Phil Hartman. We take a look inside his troubled marriage on Entertainment Tonight. Weeknights at 6.30 on WSFA. Weather is brought to you by Baptist Health, Intelligent Health Care. We were extremely anxious and fearful for Peter's life when we realized he would have to be born three months early. He was only two pounds, two ounces, and he could not have survived without the help of a neonatal unit. The neonatal unit at Baptist is extremely well equipped and well staffed with professional and skillful people who love the children they care for. Baptist Medical Center saved my baby's life. Now, the WSFA Storm Team's Rich Thomas. Our phone book recycling campaign is in high gear, and thanks to you, it's going very good. Take a look at where we're at. We're, we're going for 98 tons, and right now we are at 48 tons. This is our first progress report. Last year, we were well into June before we got into that figure, so thanks for your help. And we still need more phone books. You can uh, put them in your recycling bag on the curb, or you can uh, call the Montgomery Clean City Commission. They'll tell you where one of the many places around town where you can um, bring your books. 241-2925 is the Clean City Commission. We'll give you an update next Friday. There's Tower Cam, and uh, the rain has stopped in downtown Montgomery. We've had a few light showers during the evening hours after some heavy downpours earlier. In fact, let me go back and show you Tower Cam. And uh, you can see the sky got dark, then it got light, and then watch the rain, and lots of it, in downtown Montgomery. The biggest rain we've seen, in, gosh, in three weeks or more. 93 degrees was the high today. 71 was our low this morning. There's the normals, 86 and 64. Right now at Channel 12, this is what we have on our rooftop neighborhood weather uh, net. We have uh, cloudy skies out there, and actually we've had about uh, half an inch of rain out at uh, uh, Channel 12, and uh, apparently we're not going to see those conditions. Maybe we'll get them in here just a little bit. 
We'll try to get those for you. Temperature has been hovering around the low 70s. Here's a look at uh, reports from our WSFA weather watchers. Again, southeast Alabama came in on the low end of the totem pole here, but some places got some good rains. Val Weigel on the east side of Montgomery, 6,500s. Again, Channel 12 had half an inch. Uh, in Selma, half an inch reported by William Bowman, 1.4 inches. Uh, Robert Rogers reported that in Camden. And you can see some, uh, some people got some rains that, and this is not going to break the, de the drought. The drought is deep-seated, but it certainly helped. And tomorrow, the rain chances are looking good again. You can see the extensive rains over the southeast today. There's more over the Gulf of Mexico, another disturbance coming up. Talk about that in just a second. Look at how much rain fell in Alabama today. Uh, most of the state was affected in some way. I know everybody didn't get all the rain they wanted. At this hour, we're in a bit of a rainfall lull, but during the heat of the day tomorrow, the rain will again increase. Now, here's the situation over the last few hours as the rain starts to dry out on the radar. Still some good rains in east-central Alabama. But again, with a little bit of afternoon heating tomorrow and a little bit of instability, we're going to get these thunderstorms back. Here's what the lightning track saw. And again, southeast Alabama. Uh, largely missed there by that activity. We have a trough of low pressure in Alabama and a low pressure disturbance, a tropical disturbance coming together to, to keep the rain chances high during the day tomorrow. And even on, early on Sunday, especially in South Alabama, it looks like the rainfall could be strong. Now, I think a few pockets could see two to three inches, especially in central and east central Alabama into Georgia. But uh, we're going to be lucky to see that across the southeastern counties tomorrow with where they really, really need it. Well, we all need it. But uh, mid-80s tomorrow held down by clouds and showers. 90 degrees on Sunday into the mid-90s again by Wednesday and lows at night right around 70 degrees. Here's your beach forecast, and if you're going down there this weekend, if you've been waiting for weeks, they've had drought conditions for weeks down there, but a good chance of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow as that tropical disturbance comes up from the Gulf. And so that will interrupt your beach plans from time to time. Highs in the mid to upper 80s and uh, down to up to about 90 on uh, Monday. Gulf water temperature 76 degrees, a season high, and for the boaters, south winds 8 to 14 knots, seas 1 to 2 feet. Temperatures across the state at this hour, low to mid 70s from 70 at Auburn to 75 in the Dothan area. And here's tonight's forecast. It looks like this. Scattered showers and thunderstorms. 70 degrees for the evening temperatures for tomorrow. 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mid-80s for the afternoon high tomorrow. So a good chance. Keep your fingers crossed. Again, today's rains did not in any way end the drought. It just helped a little bit. South winds 8 to 14. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy, maybe some evening thunderstorms, 68. And then on Sunday, the best rain chances shift to the coast. A 20% chance of thunderstorms here in central Alabama, 90 the high on Sunday. Well, your five-day outlook shows more heat and more dry weather Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So it looks like we're going to go back into a dry spell after a little bit of hope over the weekend. Let's hope we all get the rain we need. And let's hope that... Um, that time, uh, ready next time. No. You need me on the storm center. You were intensely working on those maps. <laughs> I was I intensely see. working. I saw that, and I could hear your little pin clicking on that uh, pad. Yeah, there. right. So you're off the hook. Don't worry. <laughs> well, here's a question for you. Now, I'm going to read this, even well, though you do write. it. I'm ready. Who will win when the Owls meet the Spartans in the Division II baseball final? Tomorrow, Lee Zurich will have that story. Who? Who? But next, the story of two little girls who are battling a grown-up disease. Bob James said nobody made money off the taxpayers from political favoritism or just plain corruption. Let's look at the record. Tax breaks for a family business. Big dollar contracts for family members. A campaign aids company controlling state grants. A family-owned landfill doing business with the state. A secret tip that could make millions for the governor's family. A partnership with lobbyists. Ethics complaints and charges of illegal payoffs. Is this politics as usual, political favoritism, or just plain corruption? Chrysler in Plymouth announces the owner's bonus sale. These unbeatable savings are also extended to all GM loyalty coupon holders and Ford appreciation coupon holders. Select customers save $17.50 on America's lowest priced minivan, Plymouth Voyager. $2,000 on Plymouth Grand Voyager. Or $2,000 on the ultimate minivan, Chrysler Town & Country. And when you choose our low 1.9 APR, you still get the extra $1,000 owner's bonus. For a limited time at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Your life is non-stop. Be here, be there, do this, do that. That's why you need BAM. With non-stop triple protection to stop body odor, a powerful antiperspirant to keep you dry, and a less irritating, no-sting, no-alcohol formula. 
the revolutionary Ban Clear Soft Solid with a shape to fit applicator that releases just the amount of invisible protection you need and keeps on working non-stop just like you. Ban, an invisible band of protection all day long. A Huntsville Times editorial says John Amari believes government can help people and he isn't afraid to pay for it. Not afraid to pay for it. That's just Amari's way of saying he'll raise our taxes. But John Amari isn't worried about a tax hike because unlike the rest of us, he sometimes doesn't pay his own. He got caught not paying his federal and state taxes. So you see, it's easy if you're John Amari to support higher taxes if you don't intend to pay them yourself. Two little girls, different families, different towns, but a shared struggle against leukemia. The disease brought Amanda Martin and Scarlett Gant together at Children's Hospital, where they became fast friends. And as Debbie Williams tells us, plan to stay that way for life. That one. That two. Watching six-year-old Amanda and five-year-old Scarlett play is like watching any kids play at a playground. But these two little girls have a special bond. Uh, I, I met her at the hospital, at Children's Hospital. Scarlett and Amanda both have leukemia. On February the 3rd of 1997 is when was our first trip to uh, Children's Hospital, and that's when they did the bone marrow and came back and told us that it was leukemia, that it was acute lymphocytic leukemia which they consider to be garden variety, mm -hmm. you know, leukemia. You know, they're very treatable, which was extremely encouraging. So. Six weeks later, Scarlett's parents got the same news. The minute she was diagnosed and I was on my way to Birmingham, I realized that that's where, that's exactly where we needed to be and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Amanda had already begun chemotherapy when she and Scarlett met for the first time. We were already in, we were past our first hard month. Right. When we met Scarlett, we were we had already lost our hair. Amanda had already started losing her hair. Um, was probably almost already bald when Scarlett came into the picture, and so Scarlett had a best friend who didn't have any hair, and that made that transition a lot easier. What do you do? That wasn't the only transition Amanda helped her new friend with. One of the pills that they taste is just really, really vile yeah. tasting, and it took us. She took 28 days worth, and on the 27th day, we finally got it down. Thanks to Amanda, she coached and, <laughs> and told us what to do and what not to do. And, and the girls did, just, just hit it off right from the very beginning. If you didn't know about the leukemia, it would be hard to tell Amanda and Scarlett were sick at all. I like to ride a bike and play Barbies and play with my friends. I like to jump on the trampoline, swing on my pork, and grind on that gator. In but they've spent more time in a hospital than most adults. When I was, when I, when I started having leukemia, um, I had to go just because, just to get treatment. But now that I'm not getting treatment, I just have to go when I start feeling bad. I don't cry when I get it. It doesn't hurt. Okay. The needle that goes in my arm. Uh -huh. They just became a little tag team and they'd walk push their pumps down the hall with IVs hanging everywhere. Any parent who sees their child suffer would like to wipe away the pain if they could. Children's Hospital has helped them do that. You can look at that from a medical standpoint, that they're the best medically, but for a mom, they are the best because they are professionals that deal with children. Well, it saved our daughter for one thing, and it made a very painful experience a lot less painful. And, and you don't ever think that you're going to be the one that's going to be at Children's Hospital. You know, it, it's a great thing, you know, to have Children's Hospital up there, but I'll never need it. When you need it, then you thank God every night that it's there. Be sure to join us for the Children's Miracle Network broadcast of Champions this weekend from 8 Saturday evening until 5 o'clock 
Sunday afternoon. By the way, Amanda's leukemia is in remission. Scarlett has another year and a half of treatment to go. And what great friends are both so articulate about telling you what they're going through, I too. loved it when she said, I don't cry when I get it. Yeah. That was that was so sweet, so touching. Well, we had a whale of a basketball game tonight, didn't we? Oh, it was a great one. Exciting to watch. I didn't mind running a little late tonight, watching that kind of game. Nothing unless, we can do. Unless you're, that's true. That is definitely true. If you're a Bulls fan, you're not happy. We'll show you the highlights and talk some Division II baseball next, but first, check out the scoreboard. Think about it. In the race for circuit court judge, do we want someone old enough to retire or young enough to make a difference? I don't like the fact that your opponent switched parties to run for circuit judge. You're the only real Republican in this race, Dorsey. You know, I hear your opponent talking a lot about experience, but he's never been a judge a day in his life. The lawyers may be backing your opponent, but we need a judge for all the people. We need you to be our circuit judge, Dorsey. Dorsey Morrow. Old enough to know the law, young enough to make a difference. Jimmy Copeland for State Representative District 89 is a man of honesty and integrity with strong family values, a supporter of business, saving tax dollars, pushing for fair tort reform, improving education, fighting crime and drug use. Vote and elect Jimmy Copeland, your state representative. Dear Mr. Shankleman, thank you for wanting to get rid of the portable classrooms because I don't want to be in a portable all day long. When it rains, the trailer leaks. When the weather gets bad, our trailer is out at the very back of the We don't have water fountains and bathrooms. And when tornadoes come, we're in danger. Thank you for your efforts. Sincerely. It's time someone listened to Alabama school children. As governor, I won't rest until every portable classroom is removed from Alabama. A proven leader. Helping young people. Protecting business and working to help create jobs. That's Perry Hooper. Perry Hooper fights for our families. He led the charge for more discipline in classrooms and to ban portable classrooms. A moment of silence for our children. Standing up for honest elections. Keep Perry Hooper working for us for all the right reasons. One of the proudest moments of our time is all around us now. The result of new ideas New technology and dedication to patient care can be seen everywhere today. To our community, this great city, and the people of Central Alabama, our heartfelt thanks for your support and encouragement over the past 50 years. Jackson Hospital, we're ready for your help. Now, the WSFA sports team's Lee Zurich. What a game tonight. You just saw it right here at WSFA. The Bulls and Pacers, a Chicago win, and they're on to the NBA Finals. Let's go to Market Square Arena. Game six between the Bulls and Pacers. Michael Jordan is ready. First quarter, Tony Kukoc with the rejection up ahead to Jordan. Unbelievable. The game is tied. Second quarter, Mark Jackson hits the three, and the Pacers are up at the half. Bulls come out strong in the third. Jordan the steal. Check out Luke Longley running the break. The pass by Jordan. Luke, are you kidding me? Bulls by four. But the Pacers going to run. Travis Best says, hey, I'll finish this off myself. Indiana up by one after three. About 30 seconds left. Best again. This is a great shot. And Pacers lead it by two. Same margin, under 10 seconds left. You know Jordan's going to take it. He just didn't get off a shot. No one expected that one. And the Pacers win it 92 to 89. Jordan has 35 points, but the Bulls lose. Game seven is in Chicago on Sunday, right here on WSFA. No games out of Patterson Field today. Tampa and Kennesaw State won yesterday, so they're in the Division II Finals. The Owls and Spartans worked out of Patterson Field this afternoon. No surprise that these two clubs are meeting for the championship. They've been the top two teams in Division II baseball for most of the season. Well, you can't say enough about the year they've had. They're 61-4. and four. I mean, that's a tremendous year, but uh, we've had a tremendous year ourselves. And uh, uh, 
anytime you got one versus two, uh, it's gonna all it's gonna be is a difference of a uh, few guys coming up with some big game with, uh, with a big game. We've had a great year. This club has done some tremendous things, and uh, just uh, just anxious for us to get tomorrow night. Coach has told us every I mean since we got here, it's gonna be passion and, de and desire and uh, and wanting to win, but. Uh, and it, but the execution is going to be key, so that's that's what we're going to try to do is just execute. And if you're looking for something to do tomorrow, why not head out to Patterson Field, Tampa, and Kennesaw State, the Division II Finals. It should be a great one. Game time is at 5:45. I don't know about you, but after Florida State beat Auburn on Sunday to win their regional, I thought they'd be tough to beat in Omaha. The Seminoles were just playing great baseball. Guess what? They're beatable. FSU taking on Arizona State. Seminoles actually take the lead here. The grand slam in the sixth. 10 to 8 FSU. Arizona State retakes it in the seventh. The wild pitch scores a run. 11 to 10 ASU. And they don't need any more runs when they play some defense like this. Awesome catch. And Arizona State sends Florida State to the loser's bracket. 11 to 10 the final score. On to Miami and Long Beach State. Long Beach eliminated Alabama from the West Regional. Second inning, Pat Barrow of Miami at the plate. See ya, solo homer, 1-0 Kane. Miami makes it 2-0 in the second. German Alvarez doubles a run in the left. Alex Santos impressive on the mound for Miami. Santos out of the game in the ninth. Long Beach trying to rally him. Not going to happen. Sweet curveball there. Miami wins it 3-1. By the way, they had more than 21,000 fans at today's game in Omaha. Great pitching matchup in Chicago today. Kerry Wood against Tom Glavin. Too bad neither pitcher figured into the decision. Bobby Cox and the Braves taking on the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Check out the play by Chipper Jones at third base. He's going to barehand it and throw him out. A nice play. Tied at two in the eighth. Not anymore. Mickey Moore and Danny with the grounder. Oops, right through Keith Lockhart's legs. A run scores. Cubs up 3-2, but the pride of the Braves ties it up. Curtis Pride is going deep. It's 3-3, and we are headed to extra innings. But in the 11th, Brant Brown with a two-run homer. Cubs win it 5-3. That is two losses in a row for the Braves. Don't forget uh, Division II finals out of Patterson Field tomorrow, 545. Mm -hmm. Two best teams in Division II. It's going to be a really good game out there. Bring everybody you know. Let's fill it up for national television. That would television definitely tomorrow. be great. And it's a very affordable ticket. Stick around. We'll be right back. The Montgomery Advertiser points out that Dorsey Morrow, candidate for circuit judge, has practiced law for only four years. It notes that Morrow could preside over capital cases in which he cannot now act as lead counsel because of lack of experience. Although a personable young lawyer, clearly his legal career is not one that has adequately prepared him for the bench at this point. The experience does matter. Elect Charlie Crook, the most experienced, best qualified candidate for circuit judge. Alabama needs a lieutenant governor who stands up for our families. Born and raised on a farm in Alabama, John Amari is fighting for our conservative principles. John Amari stands for giving parents more say in the classroom and for ending parole for violent criminals. He opposes abortion and casino gambling. I'm John Amari and I ask for your vote in the Republican primary for lieutenant governor. For the lieutenant governor we can trust, John Amari. Dear Mr. Shankleman, thank you for wanting to get rid of the portable questions because I don't want to be in a portable all day long. When it rains, the trailer leaks. When the weather gets bad, our trailer is out at the very back of the... We don't have water fountains and bathrooms. And when tornadoes come, we're in danger. Thank you for your efforts, sincerely. It's time someone listened to Alabama school children. As governor, I won't rest until every portable classroom is removed from Alabama. I want to thank everybody out there playing the Crystal Winter Square game. We're giving away over $1 million in instant cash and food prizes and discounts. Just peel or scratch the game pieces off crystal cups and boxes to see what you want. And this just in, one lucky winner found the four pieces to win the grand prize. A brand new Jeep 4x4, plus $50,000 in cash. <laughs> Crystal's Winter Square game won't last long, so wake up and head to Crystal. Lots of weekend activities make for lots of weekend news. Debbie Williams previews what you'll see. 
What you will see tomorrow is Martin Luther King III traveling through the Black Belt talking about absentee voting. Also, about 2,000 people are expected in the capital city tomorrow to march for Jesus. And Dr. Michael Lenore will be in, as he is each weekend, this time talking about hypertension. We hope you can make plans to join us as well. That's tomorrow at 6 and 10 and again at 10 o'clock on Sunday. A quick look at wake-up weather on the weekend. Yeah, tomorrow morning we expect uh, showers and thunderstorms, or at least a pretty good chance that we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms in the area. A risk of them in the morning, 71 degrees, and a better chance as we get later in the day. That's your wake-up weather forecast. Well, thanks so much, Rich. That's going to do it for us for tonight. We leave you tonight with some of this week's graduation ceremonies. We'll see you on Monday. Yes.